Hi, it's Jade. Thank you so much for joining me today on another video for our chair massage course where today we'll be focusing on headaches or chronic head pain or neck pain with a focus of the massage consisting on the head and neck and a little bit on the shoulders. So you may be coming into a corporate office or a business and a lot of people work at a uh, their desk, so they're going to have some head pain, neck pain, um, or headaches. I'd be surprised if they don't, because I'd like to know how they're doing it then. <laughs> so um, we start with a little compressions on the shoulders, because even though we're focusing on headaches and uh, the head and neck, uh, the shoulders are still involved. Um, everything's connected, like I always say. So you just start with some compressions, really moving things around. Um, don't worry about when you're moving the client, it feels like their head's wiggling and they're moving all over the chair. They're not gonna fall off. Um, usually they find it all very comfortable. So I come straight up to the back of the head, right in the skull, right there where it gets really tight. You got those tiny muscles that are really sore and I just start slowly doing circular motions. Mm, there's nothing wrong you could really do on doing a head massage. The only thing that could go wrong is if you start giving a head massage to a lady who had her hair done and she's at work and she doesn't want to have to fix it later. So always make sure to check that um, you can work on the head and neck area because some people just don't want their hair messed up. So you can work up to the... Um, up towards the top of the head very slowly in circular motions. Make sure you're using all your fingers, just kind of you're clawing down and lifting up, really getting into the scalp. And if their hair is pulled up like this, um, sometimes you can un uh, let, it, uh, let it out a little bit here like this. and that allows you to kind of work the hair, uh, scalp a little bit more. I like to pull the hair up towards the front, let it hang off the front so it doesn't get in the way in the back when we, we make a transition to work on the neck. So I imagine your hand is like a claw and you're just pulling. It's this motion, it's this motion as you're moving around the head. I won't lie to you therapists, but your hands will get tired if you do 20 minutes of this because as you can see, it's all coming from the hands and wrists. It, there isn't a ton involved in the upper body. You can lean in. See how I lean in and lean out? That can assist a little bit, but, and scratching the head too is always nice. I try to hold the head, hand on one side of the head and move the other one around. You can gently tug on the hair too. Some people like that, some people don't. But it's good to communicate. I simply phrase it this way. If something doesn't feel good, please let me know. That's always the, the best way. I start every massage that way. Before I lay my hands on anybody at all, let me know at any point if something doesn't feel good and I can do something different or we can stop. It's really important to let the person know on your chair or on your table that really they're in charge. So you keep doing this circular motion with one hand all around and then place your hand just gently there and switch to the other side. And you can kind of pull on the hair a little bit, scratch the head, that always feels good. I think for women a lot, all of them have long hair, most of them just pull their hair up on top of their head. That puts a lot of stress and strain on the scalp um, and on the fascia. So it's really nice when you can let your hair down, literally. <laughs> and I like to draw my hand straight through the head like this. You're basically pulling the hair in the opposite direction. It can feel strange, but also good at the same time. I like to take the flats of my hands next and just do circular motions. This is just a little bit more compression feeling. It's a little more gentler. And 
Then I like to take the thumbs and get as close as you can to the front of the head since someone, the person on your chair is laying face down. <laughs> um, you can't get all the way to the forehead, but you can get um, close enough. And then just do circular motions all the way around. And don't worry about messing the hair up. If the person doesn't care, you shouldn't either. Just kind of do your thing. Do the thumbs and circular motions, and you can move all around the head. One of the most tender spots for people if they're having headaches are going to be in the temporal lobe on the sides of the heads. And you can usually feel it. Uh, it'll feel a little more tight than normal. Be very aware that you're not accidentally poking them in the ear when you're doing this or anything like that. Just keep doing circular motions with your thumbs. And pull all the hair up to the front. I like to kind of twist it. It kind of helps it stay in place a little bit more. And so instead of pulling up like claws, we're gonna push down. So it's a push down motion. And when you push down, and then you kind of pull a little, a little bit like this. So it's down and up. It's almost like you're lifting the skin from the actual skull. So down and then up a little. And try not to like strain your fingers and hands while you're doing it. It's such a small motion. So if the person has earrings on, just work around it. Don't ask them to take them off. You can work the ears too, because there's some tight areas right behind the ears sometimes, and that can cause tension too. And just do circular motions. Everything you usually work in the head always feels like we're working in circular motions. And we'll go back to the base of the skull and do some more movement in there, just moving your fingers in a circle. If you want, you can go up and under and hold. Just be aware, check in with your client. Sometimes some people can get like a sharp pain feeling because it's, the muscles can get really tight underneath there. And you can work all the way around the edge of the skull and then work back to the center. Then I like to come to one side and I like to do kind of a bit of a stretch here where I'm lifting the skull up, but also at the same time with my finger and thumb pressing down. So you're creating a length through the cervical spine. Sometimes when you do it, you'll notice the person will take a deep breath because it opens things up. And then once you've done that, I just like to gently need it a little bit with both hands. Okay. And then if you want, you can just switch to one hand. It's just a lifting. It's like you, you, you sometimes the person can feel like the skin is lifting from the throat too. And then I like to flip around and stand straight on and just do circular motions straight down the side of the spine. And you may even take it straight across the shoulders if you wish. I like to take my thumbs and kind of slide them up underneath and press up. And just rest here for a minute. Whenever you pause holding a specific um, movement, this is an opportunity for you to rest too. Just kind of relax your body. This is also an excellent little trigger point here for any um, headaches that might 
happen behind the eyes or any like real tension that sits there in the back. If someone has a headache just kind of behind the back of their head. back to the circular motions down the sides of the neck. If you can, you can even reach kind of towards the front where the scalenes are and do one side at a time where you're just kind of doing circular motions. Be very gentle because this can be a very tender area, especially for people who work at a computer all day. Everything gets very short when we're hunched over. And then switch to the other side. Go up behind the ears, kind of just do some circular motions there. And up around the skull, up to the front of the head. Kind of just massage the head in general from standing from this side. This just gets it at a different angle may hit specific sore areas that you couldn't get when you were standing in front of the chair. Sometimes doing the same motion is fine, but from a different angle. And be aware if there are hair clips in someone's hair or bobby pins they didn't tell you about, um, you can take them out or just be conscious and aware and work around them. Another thing to keep in mind, especially when you work a lot on the head, if anybody finishes up and they are ready to get up, um, I try to kind of just be right by the chair, hold the chair a little bit and kind of help them up because you can feel kind of dizzy. And I like to do one final press up right behind the back of the skull with my fingers and thumb, just gently lifting up. So imagine you're lifting the skull off the spine and letting a little oxygen and space in there uh, and allowing just time for the space to release itself. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you got some good information out of this. Um, please check out the other videos in the chair massage course. There'll be stuff on stretches and glutes, hips, and legs. Um, you can find that on wellnessplus.tv or on Amazon Prime. Take care of yourself and know I'm always rooting for your health. And keep in mind, if you guys are in Austin, I do outcall massages. You can find me at jadenelson.net um, and you can schedule yourself an appointment. I look forward to hearing from you and have a lovely day. With hundreds of videos that you can stream on virtually any device to help you reduce stress, lose weight, or just improve your health and well being overall. At wellnessplus.tv, we are dedicated to helping you on your health and wellness journey. Join wellnessplus.tv to find hundreds of videos to help you improve the health of your body and your mind. Wellnessplus.tv, get well, feel better.